Fleur, always delighted to see you. You're recognized for your opening statement. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, and delighted to join you and, and uh, Ranking Member McGovern and the rest of the committee members uh, on, the, on the Rules Committee. Uh, let me uh, begin with some comments that were made by President Trump's former Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper. He had this to say in response to this bill's proposed cut of the state and foreign oper operations allocation by nearly one-third. And I quote, when we don't lead, we create a vacuum that will be filled instead by China. He continued, America's leadership means more th than just military capability. Diplomacy and foreign assistance are part of it, too. This proposed budget would upend that relationship by gutting our civilian toolkit and depriving America of the diplomatic leadership whose benefits I have seen last a lifetime, end quote. I have further quotes from Admiral James Doritas from the United States Global Leadership Coalition, the American Jewish Committee, Catholic Relief Services, Christian Connections for International Health, Care, Interaction, uh, and President of the One Campaign, uh, and uh, all who are come out in opposition to this bill. So I would like to submit this compilation of letters along with my written testimony. Without objection. Thank you. Thank you. We will be told that, and we are told, that this 2024 state and foreign operations funding bill is tough on our adversaries. But the opposite is true. This bill seeds America's position as the leader of the global community. It weakens our national security, it shortchanges foreign assistance, and it hinders our ability to address the climate crisis, and it harms women around the world. This is a reversal of the United States' historic position on a world stage, and it promotes isolationism. We are supposed to be the leaders of the free world. The majority is diminishing the United States, what we stand for and what our values are, for our own people and for people around the world who look to us for inspiration and for hope. Damage has already been done as partners and allies wonder whether the United States will be with them or whether they will be forced to turn to the Chinese Communist Party or to Russia to get needed investment or support in international institutions. With this bill, and I said the PRC, who this bill purports to be tough on, the PRC has increased development spending and financing by 430% over the last 10 years of available data, with China surpassing the United States as the largest training, trading partner in many countries in Latin America and Africa. China has more embassies and consulates, diplomats, and foreign assistance than, any, than anyone else in the world. They are challenging our model of democracy and capitalism around the world and going virtually unchallenged. They led the world in providing vaccines during the pandemic with an inferior product because we were unable to move in an international way to provide vaccines to the rest of the world. This bill is an unfathomable 31 percent cut to our nation's ability to engage in diplomacy and to project soft power. But knowing such a cut would be irresponsible and lead to negative repercussions around the world, this bill claws back billions of dollars. $11 billion, which comes from the EPA's Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund, part of the Inflation Reduction Act. And I might add that when you look to rescissions, rescissions then are cutting some of the most valuable programs that we have. I might just make a comment with regard to Israel, because the uh, continuing resolution, which has been offered by the majority, in fact, would cut the state foreign ops a, a, a committee by 8.1 percent. That is an 8.1 percent cut to the funds that we provide 
to Israel. Mr. Cole, Mr. Joyce, Mr. diaz Ballard, Mr. Reschenthaler, you are all appropriators. You have experience in acting spending bills. You know what we should be doing right now, and this is not it. We are out of time. We cannot pass 11 appropriations bills in the House and the Senate and get a signature from the President by September 30th. The urgent issue is keeping the lights on. Everyone in this room knows that keeping the U.S. government running will require bipartisanship. Let's get to work in that effort. Democrats and Republicans already compromised <coughs> to pass the debt limit bill with a budget agreement. But because House Republicans immediately reneged, they have moved us to the brink of a shutdown. Thank you, and I yield back. Thank you. We'll next go to, well, I was going to say my very good friend, but you're all my very good friends. Uh, but my very good friend, uh, Chairman uh, Dave Joyce of Ohio, Chairman of the uh, Subcommittee on uh, Homeland Security, the Appropriations Committee. Gentleman's recognized for his testimony.